the Thoughty Orty podcast. So, a bit of an interesting story around it. It was when COVID had just started. I was working at um, Ashwork, Ashworth High Security Mental Health um, Hospital in Liverpool. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a very it's a very uh, different environment. But I remember a manager I had at the time. She just turned to me one day and she's like, she said, you, "You know, you're 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 a good clinician." She said, "But you're you're a little bit different." And I was like, "Yes, that's correct." Um, <laughs> and my son had already been diagnosed, and I told her, and she's like, "Just come and have a conversation with somebody." So anyway, one thing led to another. Uh, and I was diagnosed with autism when I was like 36, something like that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, when I got a formal diagnosis, I wasn't really shocked because I guess it's common to all people with neurodiversity. You always kind of know. Um, and she told me, and then ADHD, it was one, it was one of my patients. He was a consultant psychiatrist who also used to work at Ashworth. And yeah. uh, I was treating him one day and he just kind of turned around to me and he's like, you know, you've got ADHD, don't you? And I was like, yeah, I know. And he said, why don't you come for an assessment? <laughs> so I went for an assessment and then I got diagnosed with that as well. So, and I think, I, I know I actually said to him, I said, one thing that confuses me is I don't know where autism starts and finishes or ADHD starts and finishes. And yeah, he said to me, do you need to? He says, I, I, I don't. He said, I just call it neurodiversity. And people have different mixes and, uh, and combinations of different traits mm-hmm. and attributes. He said, you're an individual, as most people with neurodiversity are. And he, he is a consultant psychiatrist who, he actually runs a private company in Manchester called Sanctum Health. And they do uh, private assessments for people that want to go down that route. Um, sure, sure. I think that's it's quite a common um, sort of feeling, especially for, for people who have like a, a dual diagnosis call them odd hd as yeah like a a u yeah dhd um and uh i i find it really interesting whenever i've i've talked to to anyone with with that sort of dual diagnosis because it's it it they can be very co- contrary in their like signs um of each so like mm-hmm. with adhd you have the aspect of sort of chasing that that sort of novelty and excitement and interest and quite often that sometimes leads to being quite impulsive and wanting to to make changes and wanting to continuously kind of adjust things but then you've got like the the autism side which is you know thrives in terms of mental health when we have like a stable routine we know what we're going to be doing each day each week um to some degree so it's like at what, at what point are you more autistic or ADHD kind of, you know, that, that sort of push and pull kind of dynamic. It's, it's, it's really quite complex. I think. I don't know what your experience was though, Tom, but I definitely felt like I'm more autistic than ADHD. So if, mm-hmm. if you, you know, you read through the diagnostic criteria, if you look at the DSM five, you can see those common traits. There's definitely some ADHD there, but I definitely felt like I'm more autistic. And by virtue of that fact, it was the benefits that came with autism that allowed me to um, attain the level I have in different areas that um, mm. attention to detail and being able to consume, you know, like large amounts of information and get that deeper level of learning on a subject area. It was that autistic, those autistic traits that allowed me to excel, sure. I feel anyway. Mm-hmm. I think it's, um, it's 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 hard isn't it because i mean obviously i i and and many other people when we do our advocacy work when we talk about experiences in generality it's you know it's the the thing is is that you can't you can't uh know exactly how each individual is and how they think and how they live their lives and everyone has their own sort of personal experiences um I had a podcast with um, Dr. Megan Neff, which I brought up quite a few times just because it was such an insightful podcast for me. Um, but sh- she was talking about um, neurodivergent insights, if you want to look her up. But she was talking about the um, being ADHD or autism dominant in terms of sort of presentation. And I, I think for, for a lot of people, some some people might be put off 
by um, sort of, I guess, put, putting levels of autism and ADHD kind of as a as a comparison. But I think it, it is quite useful in terms of understanding how you live your life, how you work, because as I said, like it's not, you know, autism is and ADHD are the, the psychological diagnosis is so they're they're based on um outward signs and it it's not always clear exactly you know from the scientific li literature that there's these designated split categories and like biological markers for knowing if someone's autistic or hd because we, we don't have that because it's not based on on that um it's just you know we, we do some people do studies they look into the trends the biological trends for someone with that diagnosis but it's always from um that sort of psychological basis so it's i really enjoyed that podcast i know the one you said you're talking about yeah. i watched it she, it was really good um what i can say is that having worked with a lot of consultant psychiatrists is that um when you're looking at human behavior you're talking about shades of gray and there is nothing that's clear yeah. cut Mm -hmm. But in order to um, objectify what they do, they had to have diagnostic criteria in order to be able to diagnose somebody with something. Yeah. So in the ICD-10 or the DSM-5, if you look at it, it will have these traits. But I remember one thing that somebody said to me. He said, uh, all these things are, are labels. And when yeah. you strip the labels back, you're just looking at behaviors, traits, you know, common patterns. Mm -hmm. um, and really, when you give somebody that diagnosis, you're describing um, a certain set of psychological, um, like the psychodynamics that underpins it. And that goes yeah. for a lot of mental health conditions. The label is probably less important. It's understanding the behaviors and why they do them that is more important, one for the clinician and two for the individual. So they know how best to manage the world that we live in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I think that another sort of gray area comes in when we when we think about um the idea of sort of identity as well because you know the medical system as as you said it's 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 set up to box you into different categories to label you um and to provide systems of support or ways of improving on yourself that are applicable to that to that label um but when it comes to like things like identity um you know it's it's something that's sort of very intrinsic for a lot of people um and it's it's not always the case that every person who has who could be considered to be autistic and adhd um are able or want to go for a diagnosis because it's always based on that sort of model of what's wrong and how can we help and if you don't see anything wrong um they're not going to really see the the point in giving you a label and sort of helping you out unless it's to do with sort of uh validation of your like self-identity which is so it's, it's an interesting sort of area